thank you for joining us immediately after leaving that meeting. I wonder if you could just tell us your impressions about how it went, whether it was productive uh, for you and, and your colleagues in terms of advancing this work. Well, I think it was extremely productive. We had a lot of leaders from the major pharmaceutical and biotech companies, uh, you know, they're based in the United States and beyond, you know, with the president, the vice president, Dr. Burks and other leaders from the administration. And people talked about what's being done to develop vaccines as well as treatments for the coronavirus. And there are many, many different approaches being tried. Uh, a lot of progress has been made early on. And I think uh, in general, there was a lot of enthusiasm and encouragement for the, all of this effort and especially a spirit of cooperativity and, uh, and cooperativity and collegiality between the different groups to work together. And clear willingness from the administration leaders, whether it's uh, Tony Fauci at the NIH, Redfield at the CDC, you know, and the FDA, uh, to work with these companies in order to make sure uh, that these new products could appear as soon as possible. Well, give us a sense of a realistic timeline for what people can expect for a potential vaccine from you guys. Well, from us, you know, it, 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 let's say quickly, there are therapeutics which have a faster development timeline. That is something to treat people who are already sick. That typically is faster, which could be months or a very short amount of time, a year or so. Vaccines typically take longer, but some approaches will be starting in the clinic this year in people. And we'll see how those results go and how this can turn into something faster. Sanofi is basing our approach on a recombinant DNA technology. We have a flu vaccine that is produced on this technology, the only one that's based on this type of technology in the world, a licensed product. And we, in fact, we think it's well suited to make a coronavirus vaccine based upon the flu data and early work we did with SARS that we think can translate very quickly uh, into the coronavirus. So we hope to have a vaccine in the clinic within a year or so and hopefully uh, you know, move quickly into development past that towards a product uh, as we all see how the, you know, the, uh, the outspread of coronavirus uh, changes or grows. Do you, do, does Sanofi as a company or do you think the industry in general needs more from the administration, the government in terms of funding, cooperation? Our Eamon Javers, of course, was in the room and asked the president uh, if he thought the government would commit more funds uh, to the industry to help with these efforts. And I think he sort of jokingly responded, the industry already has too much money. So what is your take on what the industry needs? Well, you know, we need the cooperativity. We certainly do with the agencies that I just talked about, and we get it, they're great partners. We're collaborating with BARDA on our vaccine, and they've been great uh, collaborators and, uh, and really are helping us make quick progress. Um, I think anything the administration can do to encourage that, uh, uh, the things that they can do to facilitate uh, advancement of, of, of new candidates, whether or not money, certainly money is coming from the federal government, you know, and it's still you know, being determined how much that is or should be. I think, you know, rather than say, I think the president might have been somewhat joking when he said uh, what he said uh, that you quoted. Um, but I think it really depends upon how the, you know, the outbreak of coronavirus goes, you know, and what kind of help we, it turns out we need. Because I think we need both vaccines and therapeutics. And let's not underestimate this is a challenging problem. We think there are good tools and approaches at hand that will find success. Um, but we should not be, uh, you know, too overconfident that this can happen quickly. Sarah? Dr. Shiver, just trying to understand the, some of the technicals here, recombinant DNA versus, say, the mRNA. What, what are the advantages for your vaccine and, and maybe some of the disadvantages as well versus some of the other companies like Moderna that is also working on this project? No, it's a very good question. First of all, it's great that new and multiple technologies are being tried. The more approaches being tried will increase our chances to success. The recombinant protein approach that we're using is, you know, is a technology that Santa Fe acquired several years ago. There is a, a licensed flu vaccine based upon this that works very well. And, and it's a platform in the sense we should be able to put new uh, proteins from other uh, viruses like coronavirus into the technology and have a, a faster way to, to produce it than was historically available. Um, so, uh, so I think this is very helpful. The, the Moderna approach and several companies use this approach called message RNA in several different formulations. They have the advantage of being able to get to clinical trial material faster, generally, I think, than the recombinant protein work. Uh, it's still a, a, a new technology. There aren't licensed products yet based upon it. Um, and so I think it's a good combination to have a, 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 a newer technology like ours that can actually uh, 
you know, uh, turn readily into a new coronavirus vaccine. We can use the production that already exists for the flu vaccine. And if we have a successful vaccine, quickly make 100 to 600 million doses of vaccine with our existing infrastructure for production that exists in New York and Pennsylvania. Uh, I suspect they're not my companies, but the mRNA companies, you know, don't have a licensed product and probably would have to do some more work to develop that capability to manufacture and produce large amounts of their product. Hmm. We're all trying to get smarter at this. Thank you, Dr. John Shiver, for joining us from the White House. And thanks to our Meg Terrell as well. Thank you.